Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to all of you for this very, very exciting and interesting session that Bitosa Silicon Valley on behalf of Bitosa Global and with uh, powered by ICC, which has uh, a very good program called Crack, Crack the Wellness Code. So with their support, we are running this program. Uh, Obviously, we are all going through some unprecedented times in our lives, and I hope that everybody on the call today and their friends and family are all safe and, and well. Mind-body-soul connection is very important most of the time, but it is especially more important during our current time. And I think what we are trying to accomplish through today's session is to help everybody on the call. What we are doing is we have put this program with the help of ICC, which is the India Community Center, and some of its very established, well-known people on the call. Uh, I'm going to actually hand it over to Mr. Dinesh Chandra, who is a very well-known business organizational change management guru. He has led several organizations, including the big companies like American Express, Beckman Coulter, Cisco, Larson and Tubro, and the list goes on and on. He's a very, very well-known, very well-recognized change guru. His passion, of course, now is with wellness and healing. And he's also a coach for personal change of wellness and co-founder for Institute of Conscious Dialogue. He's authored several books, and articles on change. And the one that is recently published is entitled, What is True Wealth and How Do We Create It? And it is based on transformational leadership group meetings that he's had with uh, uh, Honorable Dalai Lama. He's also taken many senior folks from the Bay Area to meet with Dalai Lama. So uh, we have a fantastic program. I know it's a packed program, so I'm going to hand it over back to Dinesh to take it forward and I will come back to you towards the very end. So please relax, enjoy, and I'm sure you will love this session today. So Dinesh, over to you, thank you. Thank you, Arup, and uh, once again, welcome you all. Like Arup said, in this uncertain time, we uh, trust that you're taking all the preventive measures. Uh, what else can we do? Uh, we have a choice. We can be proactive and build strong immunity to deal with COVID-19 and any other future virus, or we can choose anxiety. The purpose of the support group is to encourage adoption of the wellness best practices. Knowing is power and learning to do is superpower. That is our belief here. Each week we learn wellness habits from experts and then we practice, practice adopting them. Uh, Arup said it, my passion is healing and ad adopting wellness practices. And I have four passionate people in this hour uh, well, Jesse Sheehan, who is passionate about music, uh, Dr. Sachin Deshmukh, and Erika Deshmukh, yoga master, and conscious eating, we are going to learn today. Dr. Naras Bhatt, our sleep expert, and Dr. Madan Kataria, founder of Laughter Yoga. So stay tuned. And we start, always start with listening to soothing music. So here is Jesse Sheehan. Hi, everybody. Um, good morning. I was going to play a little uh, Bansuri for you in Rag Kirwani, which is a rag based on a scale known in the West as harmonic minor scale. And uh, this rag is often played in instrumental music. It's, it's considered good for instrumental music. You won't hear it in vocal music as much. So here it goes. Jesse has spent four years in India learning from Pandit Narayan Ghosh and other masters. So here's Jesse. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Jesse. Thank you. That really helps us uh, connect to our deeper self. And at the Institute of Conscious Dialogue, we practice four important aspects for a strong body. Uh, be conscious, be present, or optimal sleep, diet, yoga, exercise. Today, we are going to go and explore the first two. How, how do we come to the present moment? How do we become conscious? Most of us operate most of the time on autopilot, like uh, waking up, making coffee, getting ready, driving to work, taking calls. While our mind wanders, we are not present. What does it mean to be present? Well, to me, being present means to focus our awareness on this moment with calmness, acknowledgement, and acceptance of our feelings, thoughts, and body. Why is it so hard? It's because our mind is a chatterbox and processes more than 60,000 thoughts a day. So our challenge is to take our full of thought mind and focus it on the present moment. It's like acknowledging the weeds in our backyard and bringing our focus on the rose. How do we do that? Well, very simple. Uh, one of the habits, if you already are meditating, wonderful. If you're not, then may I suggest that you just sit in a comfortable position now. Set an alarm for five minutes. And today, Sachin is going to take us through uh, 
feeling our breath and you will soon practice that. Noticing when our mind begins to wander and bring it right back to the breath and make sure to be kind and non-judgmental to our wandering mind. That, that is it simply habit. We have to train to come back to breath. This simple process can lead us from wandering full of thought mind to a conscious mind in present moment. And now to practice conscious breathing and conscious eating, we have Dr. Sachin Deshmukh and Erika Deshmukh. Sachin. Thank you, Dinesh. So it's a morning time. So in the morning time, we always start the practice with the intent. So we want to see how our day unfolds. And we are using these two words affirmation for this moment. And those are positive and calm. So the practice we will choose the breathing will include these two affirmation words. So let's start. So you sit in any comfortable position, chin parallel to the ground, palms next to the body, right at the junction of the upper and the lower half of the body, facing to the sky, but relax. And make your body and spine comfortable. Make chin parallel to the ground. And then once you feel ready, so take a deep breath and then close your eyes. So follow your breath and then see, are you breathing through the chest or breathing through the stomach? So if you are breathing through the chest, we want to transcend it all the way down to the stomach. Now following rhythm of the breath. So see how many counts per minute are we breathing. And then any correlation we find between the heartbeat and then our breath. So start relaxing the body. So relaxing the toes, heels, knees, and then the hips. And then the palms, wrists, elbows, and then the shoulders. Relaxing the lower back, middle back, upper back, back of the neck, back of the head, top of the head, whole of the face. Open and relax our chin, slide back, open and relax our throat. Slide back, open and relax the chest and then gently glide to our belly and then just flow with the breath. Gently just breathe in and then breathe out. If our mind wanders, which it will, we gently bring it back to the breath. So our mind has one thought, so breathing in and then breathing out. Now once you get in tune with the breath, transitioning into four dimensional breath. So as you breathe in, you pause. And then as you breathe out, you pause. So as you breathe in and then you pause. And then as you breathe out, you pause. Keep your body still now on. Keep your eyes closed. We'll go to the affirmation. So as you breathe in, you think I am calm. As you breathe out, think I am positive. I am positive. Or you can do opposite. As you breathe in, you think I am positive. As you breathe out, think I am calm. So whatever works for you. So now we have two ideas to work with. So as you breathe in, we just pause. I'm positive. As you breathe out, you pause. I am calm. 
or we repeat i am positive as you breathe in as you breathe out think i am calm so i am positive i am calm i am positive i am calm i am positive i am calm so now i will go into the deeper into the affirmation so i will recite the whole affirmation so in the moments of turbulence i remain strong i am positive and i am calm i am strong and then take a deep breath gently just breathe in and then breathe out again take a deep breath gently just breathe in and then slowly rub your palms together so holding the base of the palms on top of the head slide it to the side of the head to the shoulders to the arms to the chest in the back and then all the way to the toes rotate the shoulder forward backward is the body taking a moment again breathe in so massaging the fingers bring them on top of the head to the side of the head and then to the shoulders to the arms to the chest all the way in the back and then all the way to the toes and then rotate the shoulder forward backward is the body taking a moment so now we'll do the body tapping so tap the arm above the and then under and then above and then under the chest in the back and then we want to go all the way to the toes and then one more time so tap and then under and then under to the chest in the back and then all the way to the toes and then we'll just do the body turning last part i am positive and i am calm and then i am positive i am calm and the last one in silence make an eye contact with the ground and then once you feel ready so breathe in and then very gradually open your eyes so i hand it back to dinesh and erica thank you thank you sachin mm, erica Hi everybody. Please. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm a dietitian, so often we talk about uh, what to eat and how to stay healthy. Uh, but my fascination is really in how to eat and being in the present moment. And so we're going to do an exercise with a piece of food. And Dinesh mentioned, if you were here at the beginning, it's really helpful if you have something to eat in front of you. It's really helpful. It's the morning. You know, great things to do this with is something that. Kind of triggers you to eat more, like a piece of chocolate. Um, it could be a raisin thing, you know, things that you might eat more than one often, just kind of grab mindlessly. And so if you can, run out and grab it. And if not, you're going to use your imagination and you're going to do this the very next time you can. Um, and it helps me if you do chat out what you have, then I can incorporate that into the exercise and I'll see a few of the things that people have in their hands. Even if you have a cup of tea or water, it's helpful. What's that, Dinesh? It's, Is an, it a orange. it's an orange. Okay, last time he had a pistachio. That's a, that's a good thing to do it with too. So we're gonna do an exercise and this is really, often when we eat, we do, as Dinesh was saying in the beginning, we're not in the present moment and we eat on, we just go on autopilot. I had a client who used to call it the Hoover method, like the vacuum cleaner. You know, we just, we start eating and we 
go and go and go and then all of a sudden we notice we're done. Often the first bite we really savor if it's delicious and then we may be so distracted and our mind is is full of so, oh, the, is my voice not, are you not able to hear my voice or is it somebody's computer? It says, please increase the voice. Is it me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we go can ahead. Hear. Oh, you can hear. Okay, I was noticing a chat. So anyway, I, <clears throat> I like to tell a story real quickly of how I first learned of this practice. And often it takes times like these extraordinary times we're in right now, um, unprecedented. Um, where people find themselves in these calamities really and then find themselves in the present moment. So there's, this is a true story uh, and I learned about it when I was going through my own healing many years ago, about 25 years ago, and from a macrobiotic um, expert named Lino Stancic. And his father was actually in a concentration camp um, in Greece actually, he was Yugoslavian. And um, it was 1943 and he was with 32 other prisoners, 31, there were 32 of them. And he, he was, had the, so little to eat, you know, only a piece of bread and chicory coffee. And if he was lucky at night, it would be soup with potentially potatoes and sometimes nothing at all. And he saw the worst situations around him, as you all know. He saw people starving and dying and he was so bitterly cold and freezing. And he began to, take his food and really savor it. And it made him completely present. And he started to chew the food 50, 100, 300 times per bite. And what he noticed is he felt more warmth, he felt more energy, and he shared it with the other prisoners who mostly scoffed at him except for two others. And as the story goes, and again, this is a true story, there were three survivors of the camp and it was Antonio Stancic who did this practice and the two other, um, prisoners who did this practice with him. They all admitted to feeling more energy, more warmth in their food. And when I first heard about this, I was just so fascinated. And so inspired by chew your drink and drink your food, let's experience what this is. So just like Sachin did, go ahead and hold the food in front of you. Hopefully you haven't eaten it, all right? And put it down in your lap and close your eyes, become completely quiet in your mind, and just relax. Do a body scan. Feel your breath going in and out. Notice if it's in your chest, in your stomach, and begin to bring your mind to this little morsel of food. Perhaps you have a drink in front of you. If you're hungry for it, and just hold it in your hand and notice how hungry are you and what will it be like to taste it? And just take a nice deep breath and center yourself. Okay, now go ahead and open your eyes and just take a look at this object in your hand, but really look at it as if you've never ever seen anything like this before in your life. So notice what color it is, notice the shape and texture. There might be little ridges on it. It might be completely smooth. And think about the journey that this little morsel of food or drink, what did it take to be created and be right here in front of you right now? Noticing if it has a coolness or a warmth and don't eat it yet, keep your, keep your eyes closed. And now imagine what will it taste like and how will it be to taste it? And go ahead and just bring it up to your nose and smell it. Keep your eyes closed and just notice, does it have a smell? Is your mouth beginning to water? And again, eyes closed and without chewing, now you can put it on your tongue just sit there and let it swirl around on your tongue. Just swirling around and notice if it's starting to soften or break down. If it's liquid, is it starting to warm up? And can you taste it already? Is your mouth watering? And then begin to chew whatever you have in your mouth right now, begin to chew it with 
laser sharp focus on the process. And just bring your mind, if it wanders, back to the taste of what you're chewing on right now. And the act of eating, and notice if it's starting to change. And don't do anything else. Don't think of anything else right now. Every time the mind wanders, bring it back. And continue to chew. And continue to chew until it's uniformly smooth. And use that consistency of the food or the drink you have as a sign to swallow. And notice, just like breathing, you don't have to do anything special to swallow. And then after you've swallowed, just spend a moment thinking about how was this experience for you? And how could you incorporate this into your, into your daily practice? This is really a practice about being in the present moment when we eat. You can go ahead and open your eyes. And I'll just add in one last comment. A lot of times people take this practice, you know, very seriously and, and um, you know, we chew and we concentrate, but it's really a practice of enjoyment and savoring. We love to eat. And if we love our food, why not be completely present and enjoy the moment? That's it. I hand it off to you. I know that we're, we have a lot of great presentations, so. Thank you. Thank you so much, Erica. Uh, oh, we are uh, learning. This time yeah. you noticed that I did not start until you told me. <laughs> I noticed that. And sometimes I have, you know, if I had longer, I usually ask and feel free to chat out if you had any experiences and we can address them later. Uh, but, you know, usually I like to hear what was your experience, but. Um, so Thank you have, uh, now we are fully present and uh, we, we have done conscious breathing, we have done conscious eating, and we continue our journey for conscious living. And the very important element is of course, optimal sleep. And uh, to tell us a few wellness habits, uh, we have Dr. Naras Bhatt, who is a wonderful human being whose mission is to help people. And uh, he's a professor of mind-body medicine at Saybrook, and he teaches at UC Berkeley. And he's author of uh, many books on reversing uh, the heart disease, cancer, stress, burnout, and so on. He's a licensed practitioner, he's board certified, and I can go on. But here is Dr. Naras Pat. Naras? Hello. Uh, could you put my first slide on? Uh, yeah. Hello everyone, uh, I am uh, Dr. Naras Bhatt and I practice uh, sleep medicine uh, and uh, you know, internal medicine and of course uh, immunology and allergy in the San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna share with you today uh, the three uh, the factors that affect your immunity, particularly sleep. And in this time, during this time of COVID-19. So there are three take home messages I have for you. One, sleep and immunity connection. Two, three self-hack tools that you can start practicing starting today to enhance your sleep and boost your immunity. And then finally, how to use these tools. Tools are just devices that amplify human beings, human beings of potential. But, you know, there is an old saying, if you have a hammer in your hand, everything looks like a, a nail, but it is not enough. You should hold the hammer correctly. So if you look at this slide, the connection between sleep and immunity, acute sleep deprivation leads to decrease of your immunity that is called adaptive immunity and decreases your lymphocyte and so forth, which as you have been listening over and over again, which is a factor in COVID-19 as well. Chronic sleep deprivation produces inflammatory mediators, which you have heard in the news like IL-6. So you're, you're gonna to learn today how to work on your immunity by working on your 
belly, particularly your gut microbiome. So next slide, please. So the three tools that I want to share with you is uh, number one is a light switch. Number two, when you eat. And number three is what you eat. So light switch, sunlight is your friend. So you start your day with the exposure to sunlight and reduce your exposure to evening light, particularly blue light. And then the second tool is when you eat or the eating window versus the fasting window, which is called time restrict, restricted feeding or time restricted eating to boost your immune system. And finally, what you, you eat specifically in the Western eating culture that we live in, what not to eat and how to choose the right kind of food to boost your immune system, particularly microbiome and thereby your sleep. Next slide, please. So sleep and circadian rhythm, which is a light effect. When you're exposed to full spectrum light, sunlight, then the gland, the pineal gland and supra chiasmatic nucleus in your brain gets activated and it synchronizes your circadian rhythm and that is connected to your gut. So exercise closer to wake up time can help you and most importantly exposure for 15 to 60 minutes to real sunlight in the morning. And that is the synchronizer of your circadian rhythm that builds a sleep drive such a way that you sleep better according to your natural rhythm. Particularly exposure, stop your exposure, minimize your exposure to blue light in the evening, the or screen time, such as your computer, your uh, uh, cell phone, video games and television, and much of the redundant light in these screens is blue light, which is a 525 nanometer length wavelength. That one suppresses your melatonin secretion, thereby decreases your onset and maintenance of sleep. If you're a shift worker, of course, you may have to use full spectrum light during your waking time and bank your sleep with the short naps during your sleeping time. So next slide, please. Now, let's look at the, each one of these tools that is particularly now the, the when to eat and what to eat. Now, you will see here fasting, which is a time-restricted eating, promotes healthy bacteria in terms of bacterial diversity and also a unique category of bacteria called keystone bacteria, which enhances not only your immune system, but it connects your gut brain to your brain in your head. By the way, we have two brains. The first brain is a brain in your head. The second brain is the brain in your gut. So intermittent fasting, which is what a the best way to do intermittent fasting is synchronize your eating mostly during the waking hours, which is your, uh, the time that you have the sunrise outside, which is the circadian rhythm. And for example, if you start eating in the morning, you know, stop eating approximately eight hours afterwards and have a 16 hours of fasting and then eight hours of feeding. This once again, enhances your gut microbiome uh, di diversity. Now, the last tool is what to eat. What to eat in this culture, we use most of the time processed food, which, is a which has reduced resistant starch. This experiment you can do yourself today when you go home. And what is it? That is, 
in the evening before your dinner, half an hour before dinner, you know, you consume resistant starch as a starch powder, you know, which is like potato starch or green banana powder or easily available is inulin powder in any grocery store or a, a pharmacy. And one to two tablespoon of these powders, if you put it in water and drink as a, a drink, half an hour before dinner or closer to your bedtime, it is going to give you short chain fatty acid and the specific keystone bacteria and bacterial diversity on the first night itself that will increase your REM sleep, your memory stabilization, and also boost your immune system. So in short, I have given you three tools. That is exposure to sunlight. Second is the fasting, and the, that is the eating window versus uh, fasting window, and resistant starch. Resistant starch, once again, to summarize, comes in three major forms. That is the lentils, that is what is called dal, and then the whole gra uh, grains, that is unmilled or partially milled grains, and then seeds, and then beans, particularly things like uh, garbanzo beans, black beans, red beans, kidney beans. These are unprocessed whole grains or whole lentils and beans that gives you resistant starch. Then uncooked potatoes, unripe bananas, and maize. Maize is called maki in the Indian system. And then these also give you resistant starch. More importantly, if you cook rice or pasta or potatoes and put it in the refrigerator for 10 to 12 hours, that turns into resistant starch. When you eat it, it gives you the microbiome benefits and sleep benefit of resistant starch. So with that note, sleep is a slayer and sleep is a saver. And then try practicing these things when you go home tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, 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 Naraji. Uh, there is a question. Uh, should we eat when we are hungry or should we follow a fixed pattern? Well, you should eat according to circadian rhythm. That's number one. Number two, the, you should eat, of course, when you are hungry, but you manage your hunger such a way that you eat during your eating window, and then you fast when you, you are fasting window. So circadian rhythm is the key here. Thank you again. Uh, now we have uh, a few minutes for some questions and answers. So please type your uh, questions in the chat box or uh, raise your hand so we can uh, have... Uh, all right, so there are two participants raising hands. Okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Bhatt, there is another question for you. Uh, what is the minimum sleep hours? Okay, that's a very good question. The six to eight hours is the recommended sleep according to the American Society of Sleep Medicine. It varies, some people are longer sleepers, some people are shorter sleepers, but a minimum six to eight hours is what we recommend. And another question is 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. a good eating window? 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. is the second best eating window. The first bet, be, better or the best eating window is from your wake up time and uh, count eight hours thereafter. All right, here's another question. Uh, what about drinking water during fasting? Does lemon water okay during fasting window? Any fluid that is non-caloric during the fasting window is okay. All right, so, uh, uh, so we need 
16 hours inter intermittent means we can take snacks. During the 16 hour fasting window, you do not eat any snack. Okay. Any other uh, question? I, I see uh, uh, Naren Bakshi uh, would, uh, uh, Som, would you please uh, uh, unmute Naren Bakshi? Okay, uh, Narenji. Naren Bakshi is one of the co-founders of uh, uh, Track the Wellness Code. So, uh, uh, welcome, Narenji. So, Naras, uh, wonderful job you did today. A question that I have is, I have been practicing one hour Vipassana meditation, and after I started practicing, my sleep requirement has gone down. Is that normal? Well, as I mentioned earlier, sleep, you need at least six hours of sleep because sleep has different components, deep sleep, and then also sleep with dream, which is called REM sleep. Then you have the light sleep. So you, researchers have found out that most of us, regardless of our age, need approximately six hours to have these different sleep architecture, meaning thereby light sleep, deep sleep, and REM sleep. And so even though you think you need less sleep, it is ideal to have a, at least six hours of sleep according to the new research we have. So I was getting seven to eight hours, but after I started to do one hour Vipassana, I need one hour less. Is that normal? That is perfectly all right because you know you can uh, your sleep gets uh, consolidated, you know depending on the quality of sleep, and then in fact we use it that way in treatment that is called sleep restriction therapy so that you have more consolidated sleep as opposed to very light sleep. So you're doing very well because your yoga has helped us to consolidate your sleep. And Naranji, if I can add, uh, when you are meditating uh, for those long hours, uh, you are getting some of the benefits which we get in sleep. So meditation is also very, very beneficial that way. Another question for you, Naranji, what about exercising during fasting hours? During fasting hours, you can do your normal exercising, although most of the time we recommend walking is the best exercise but very vigorous exercise like running and so sprinting and so forth, you may not like it, but if you train your body, of course you can do it. But in general, we recommend walking as the best exercise. Uh, another question, uh, Ramadan is coming and eating habits are going to change. Uh, what is your advice for that period? I have, as a scientist and as a doctor, I do not agree with the Ramadan fasting because research has shown that Ramadan fasting is not synchronized to your circadian rhythm. So if you look at the literature, Ramadan fasting increases your insulin resistance, increases your cardiovascular event. And that is why what also what Ramadan fasting do, people do is they fast and overeat at the end of the day, and that too processed food and high in carbohydrate and sweets, which is very much detrimental to your physiology, particularly for diabetes and heart disease, and of course, for sleep as well. Thank you. And one, again, one, one more question, sleep needs to be continuous or can it be piecemeal? Sleep needs to be continuous in order to, these are called sleep stages. You have sleep cycle. As you start your sleep, your REM sleep is less in number and <clears throat> frequency. And at the tail end of the night, REM sleep increases. And so if you try to have your sleep, it's not like a bank account where you put a small amount of money at a time and then you are not missing it. You put, you put a large amount of money, meaning thereby consolidated long hour sleep. And they, there is one exception, if you are a shift worker, then you have to sleep in piecemeal because that's the only choice you have. 
So for all the rest of us, sleep according to the circadian rhythm, sunrise, sunset, and consolidate your sleep. And that is the best value and best return for your sleep time. Um, what is the best time, ideal time to go to sleep? The best time to go to sleep is when your melatonin level start dropping. That is right after sunset begins, your melatonin level starts increasing. That is when you start thinking about going to sleep. Definitely you should go to sleep before midnight because you do not want to sleep today, sleep tomorrow. And then ideal time for most of us is 9 to 10 p.m. Uh, what if you sleep more than 10 hours, uh, is it okay? And uh, also intermittent fasting and blood sugar for people with diabetes. Can you please okay. address that too? Okay, let's go to the first one. There is more than 10 hours. Very few people in our population are what, you, uh, what they are called long sleepers. This is called natural hypersomnia. And those people need nine or 10 hours. For the rest of us, eight to nine hours is perhaps the most of what we need. And about the insulin and blood sugar. Naturally, our blood sugar uh, drops during our night time, which is if you are a day worker and night sleeper. And then insulin level also drops at night. For that reason, you synchronize your fasting time such that the 12 hours of your night time synchronizes within your 16 hours of fasting time. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Naraji. Uh, there, are, there, I'm sure there are many questions, but I'm looking at the watch, and we are we have uh, uh, Dr. Madan Kataria coming up next. But before we go to Dr. Madan Kataria, uh, uh, we just want to emphasize again, these uh, uh, support group sessions are brought to you by uh, ICC and Crack the Wellness Code and Institute of Conscious Dialogue. Uh, we aim to transform our physical, mental, intellectual, and spiritual well-being to respond to uh, not only COVID-19, but any other wellness challenges. We encourage all of you to pick up at least one new wellness best practice, what you learned today, which will help build immunity and resilience and overall health. You can join us each Saturday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And now uh, let me welcome Dr. Madan Kataria, who is the founder of Global Laughter Movement. He's a medical doctor uh, by profession uh, who has dedicated his life to laughter yoga. He's currently helping the affected COVID-19 uh, in uh, people in Italy and Spain. His uh, laughter movement is now across the globe with 20,000 clubs in 110 countries. He's got more than 25 research papers on the benefits of laughter yoga. So here is Dr. Madan Kataria. Hello, everyone. Namaste. <laughs> it's time to laugh. Well, before you laugh with me, I just want to tell you a few things about laughter and then we start cracking up. First, uh, everybody knew that laughter is the best medicine. It has many benefits, but there is no way, there are not many things which makes us laugh these days and we have forgotten to laugh. So I brought some new breakthrough technology called laughter yoga, where we can laugh on purpose. We can do voluntary laughter practice because Scientifically, your body doesn't know the difference between spontaneous laughter and simulated laughter. Even if you act like a happy person, you are getting the same benefits as you get from the spontaneous laughter. Because your pulmonary and cardiovascular demand, the same set of muscles are used whether you're laughing spontaneously or you're laughing on purpose. Second, to get the benefits of laughter, we must laugh at least 10, 15 minutes. It should be a sustained laughter. And the natural laughter what we get in daily life is hardly a few seconds here and there. That's not good enough to give you the physiological and psychological changes. So with this background, I encourage all of you, now this is not the lecture, this is a workshop. So you have to laugh with me. 
So I'll lead you through some laughter exercises. And then first laughter exercise is breathe and laugh. Laughter yoga is about when you laughing, you are exhaling a lot of stale air out of your lungs. And that is replaced by fresh air. You get more oxygen. Put your hands out like this, everybody. Okay, please. Take a long deep breath in. Hold your breath. Hold it. Hold it and laugh it out. <laughs> Once again, take a long deep breath. Hold your breath. Hold it. Hold it and laugh it out. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this practice is very simple breathe and laugh so that is how you your lung capacity increases and each and every alveoli of your lungs is fully oxygenated and to prevent covid infection you need to keep your lungs stronger so daily laughter practice is a must okay now the second laughter exercise i want to do with you is Fake it until you make it. We know that fake laughter is as good as natural laughter, but we have to laugh a bit longer. So please laugh with me for a minute. Fake it until you make it. Even if you pretend laughing, it's fine. Okay? Let's get started. One, two, three, start. <laughs> 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 Keep laughing. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Yay. It's fantastic. How do you feel? Fantastic, I'm sure. Now, I want to tell you that oxygen is a very important factor for healing and health. And this is how, with simple laughing, prolonged laughter will give you more oxygen. And we have more than, uh, I think, 20, 25 studies which say that laughter yoga is a scientifically proven method and it strengthens your immune system. At Naras was saying that there are many ways we can boost our immune system. So one of the way to prevent infection is to laugh every day. So normally we won't get opportunities in daily life to laugh continuously at a stretch. So this is why laughter yoga practice is spreading across the world. 110 countries now is no laughing matter. Now I want to do one of my favorite exercise this is the one of the most popular exercise is called milkshake laughter. Now I know many people are lactose intolerant, but let's it's imaginary. Hold two imaginary glasses of milk, going to shake it twice, eh, pour into each other, eh, eh, and go pee. Ah! <laughs> 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 so you can if you want to argue with somebody this is called argument laughter come on <laughs> very good very good yay two more exercises then we finish one exercise i would recommend that uh, we should do with your family on the dinner table before you eat food ask everybody to laugh for 60 seconds it's called one minute laughter challenge now it's very difficult to laugh for one minute but when you're laughing together with people then it's not a big deal so sitting on the dining table, ask everyone to continuously laugh for 60 seconds. Now we'll do it for 60 seconds. Everybody, ready? One, two, three, go 60 seconds after. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> well done, well done. And last exercise is put your hands up like this, everybody. Bend at the elbow and take it behind and well done. <laughs> Another side. <laughs> <laughs> just to finish, I just want to give you fair. This is one of the simplest yoga, instant yoga. You feel feel good immediately. It reduces stress, boosts your immune system, and most important, your thoughts becomes more positive because it changes your chemistry by secreting neurotransmitters from your brain and help you. And laughing is very good exercise for your belly, as Naras, uh, Doctor Naras said. There is another brain in your in your belly. In your stomach. So by doing this laughter practice, you are actually activating lymphocytes or your immune system in the belly. So we encourage people to have belly laughter, belly exercises. Now with this COVID, I just want to give you information that laughter clubs have gone online because physically we are not supposed to be laughing face to face. So if you go to my website, laughteryoga.org, so just put laughter yoga on Google search. We are number one. On the home page, there is a list of Zoom laughter clubs and Skype laughter clubs where you can uh, join any club. They all are free and you can laugh for 30, 40 minutes, even 10 times in a day. And <laughs> so if uh, given an opportunity, I'll be off. If you need any help, please uh, send any message and we'll be able to help you. Thank you very much. Keep laughing. Thank you, Dinesh. Thank you, everybody. Namaste. <laughs> uh, Dr. Kataria, thank you so much. But uh, there's one question. Which one is better? Voluntary laugh or stimulated involuntary laugh jokes and all that? Yeah. Voluntary laugh is a better in terms of bringing health benefits because we have study from New Zealand where they compared people doing laughter yoga and group of la people laughing at watching comedy movies they found that laughter yoga group was far better than natural laughter. But here in laughter yoga, when we're laughing in a group, it's a mix. You start off uh, as an exercise, but it gets into real laughter. So laughter yoga actually gets you more laughter in your daily life also. Actually, you're exercising your laughter muscles. You get into habit of laughing at small, small things. It's a big science. I can't cover it in a small period. But in short, laughter yoga is a much better way than natural laughter, even comedies. Thank you, Dr. Kataria. Thank you, all panelists. Keep laughing. Keep building your immunity. And Arup, would you like to say anything? Yes. Arup Gucci. Thank you. Thank you, Dinesh. Uh, first, I would like to thank Dinesh, you, for moderating this session, which I thought was very, very exciting, very learning and lots of experience. Like you rightly said, I will personally take not one, a few of the best practices and apply it in my daily life as well. I hope all the people who participated will do that as well. I wanted to also thank all the panelists. I know Jesse's flute was outstanding, very relaxing. Uh, Sachin's meditation, thank you, very nice. Erica's uh, message that I heard from my previous session, what is eat your food and Chew your drink has stayed with me, and I continue to practice that. And uh, Dr. Narasbert's clear, uh, uh, you know, detail of how sh you should sleep and how you should manage your rhythm. And of course, Dr. Madan Kataria's uh, laughter yoga. I think all of those were great sessions. I want to also thank Som, uh, who is not visible on the screen right now, but he's been the architect putting it all together. Narenji's blessings and Narenji's mentorship to the. Birla Institute of Technology uh, Alumni Association has always been of great help. He is, of course, based in the Valley, so he guides us. And it is his, uh, his, his push to get this done is what made this possible for us. So, and of course, the entire Bitosa Silicon Valley team, as well as Bitosa Global team that worked behind the scenes to promote this, uh, to get the participants. So 
on behalf of all the team members at our, our alumni association, I thank each and every one of you for coming, spending time with us and educating and getting our people through what, I, what we all believe is one of the most challenging times of our life. So once again, thank you. I wish everyone best and be safe.